Hello, welcome to What the Flick. The W is silent. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just, so, wait, so it's Pat the Flick? <laughs> the H is silent. Hi. I'm Pat the Flick. This is Ben, this is Alonzo. That is Matt Achi. We're going to talk about Django Unchained, the latest extravaganza mashup from Quentin Tarantino. Are you going to describe it? You going to describe it? Sure, okay. yeah. So I don't, do, I don't do much of the describing. It's very exciting. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you don't see the movies I, I think everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Z. Yeah. laughs> uh, So uh, I think everybody knows the story, though. It's a, now, by it's now. a classic story. It's a classic <laughs> story. <laughs> so uh, uh, Jamie Foxx is Django. He is a uh, slave who gets uh, purchased by Christoph Waltz who is a bounty hunter and eventually uh, they team up as bounty hunters, Christoph Waltz and, uh, and Django and Jamie Foxx, and they uh, uh, go off searching for Kerry Washington, who is uh, Jamie Foxx's uh, wife, married as a slave. Uh, and along the way, uh, there is uh, much death to hunt. <laughs> Get the man! Touch your guns, you die. Come on over. We got a safari going on that's a good bit of fun. Uh -huh. So Jamie Foxx, you know, uh, got so much crap for the joke on Saturday Night Live about the killing white people. I kill all the white people. Mm -hmm. And Fox, of course, has uh, imploded. Right. I mean, there's not, they're not even, Fox not even trying now. I mean, <laughs> it, was the, it was the most innocuous joke that one could make. But there is a lot of killing of white people, that said. Yes. Yes, there is. But black people get killed, too. There are some, it's yes. Opportunity, yeah. It's equal opportunity. People, yes. Yeah, it's a Tarantino movie. People get shot. There's a lot of blood spray on white things in this There's movie. There's a tremendous Cotton, amount of blood spray. Snow, horses. You right now. Right. Yeah, why it's not? It's like Tarantino very just discovered Technicolor. <laughs> no, but it's, it's, it's a very quintessentially him kind of film, right? So you have this mashup of spaghetti western and black exploitation film with the anachronistic rap soundtrack. And it's fun, but it's also very typically him in that. Tarantino, the director, is so in love with Tarantino, the writer, that there's no sense of like restraint or pairing, and and so individual scenes just go on forever, and and maybe there's a payoff, and maybe there's not, but you have a sense of time passing. It, it is kind of a similar <laughs> issue, I think, that we're all going to have maybe with This Is Forty, in that like when you're writing mm -hmm. and directing your own stuff, like, well, yeah, I wrote this, it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm awesome. It's all right? gold. Right? <laughs> right, right, but you know, but the thing with. Uh, with Tarantino, with that, with the, with that criticism that uh, you, uh, I've heard from you before, and you hear from others, and it's valid certainly that that it's Tarantino in love with his own writing. But I think I'm also in love with Tarantino's writing. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. Like if I, if if this were in the really unlikely event that editing Django were up to me, <laughs> uh, yeah, it wouldn't be what it was. Uh -huh. There would be 20 fewer minutes. But I did not feel. Like it would still be long, and there would still so those scenes would still go on. You know, there are a couple of them that that, that would have been shortened. And right. It's I, not a driving narrative. It's not. It's it's not. But it's it, not a it, sense it, of it urgency. Is, it is for a while, though. It is for a while. It isn't. That's the thing. Right. I think they get that, to the plantation. Yeah, they get to the plantation. There's like. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, my thing with with Tarantino, and I, you know, I admire him a lot. But there's a lot that he does. I think is brilliant, and and he's really good at what he does. If he has an Achilles heel, and I think he does, it's not so much necessarily that he's in love with his own writing as much as. He doesn't always have the strongest sense of pacing, mm -hmm. and so I think you know you look at like the first half of this movie, it's just like clip, clip, bam, bam, things, things, and happening, and yeah, and then suddenly to to then slow down, and not to really slow down for any good reason, not to slow down because there's so much happening or there's so much to take in. It just feels like he kind of loosens the reins at some point and doesn't have control over what's going on. I feel like at this point in his career, you could make two entire movies out of the footage that should have been cut out of all the Quentin Tarantino movies. Um, so, uh, but beyond that, I think when it works, it works so well. Yeah. And there's so much uh, to recommend about this that, that, yeah, I have quibbles with the pacing, but they don't get in the way of my enjoying the film. And maybe they slow it down at Plantation to let the Leonardo DiCaprio character really establish a sense of menace. And maybe that's an attempt to, to build tension, to slowly build it up until that big showdown happens. At well, the and there's maybe a good, that's what there's that's a good payoff with Sam Jackson's character, too. Yeah. Really, he comes off as buffoonish and then that turns at one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's talking to DiCaprio, there's this, a private scene with them and suddenly it changes, it, it, at least it changed my view, mm -hmm. complete view, complete 180 on that character. It, it does, it, I think all of this is valid. I just think it's all valid in the context of like me being very critical of like the last episode, two I, episodes back of Homeland. Like, 
like it's it's something that I love that made some significant mistakes, but overall, no, I, I, overall I still enjoyed the entire. Experience. I thought this was a great movie. I had a great time. I came out of it really excited and had really enjoyed myself in a way that a lot of the other screenings I've seen in the last few weeks mm -hmm. didn't grab me. I thought I had a you know I I really liked it, but it does meander a little bit. Yeah, and I, and I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I think Tarantino's writing and character development and, and just kind of like the vignette thing that he does really adds to that. But if you look at you know, my point about kind of you know, narrative tension and, and driving things along, look at a movie like Inside Man that keeps bringing up little bits, but that movie, I think, completely still builds tension. By the end of the film, like you, you've not, you don't feel like you've lost your way and this one feels like it, it goes off a little bit. With I, the asides I, and the With the asides yeah. and the flashbacks. You, what he does and, do, and the several endings, it kind of feels it like. Did, it didn't right. feel like there were several endings. But what he does do remarkably well, really, is, is that even in limited exposure to certain characters, you feel you get a fully well-rounded character, even if, he, if it's got a, the character he plays even, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. which is just there briefly, and it's funny, and it's an odd casting choice, <laughs> yeah. except by the I end of it. I was convinced the other guy was Robert Forster. <laughs> no, and it's not. Right. Well, he's yeah. another thing, the only person in the movie that isn't somebody. Like, mm -hmm. in the right. closing, right. it's like, oh, that was, oh, and he was, uh, you know, there's a crazy amount no, of. No, I mean, uh, to be clear, like, like yeah. walks by a window and right. has no line. I mean, yeah. to be clear, like, I'm splitting hairs. This movie's fucking great. No, it's a lot of fun, and I will say, you know, it has, I don't always love Tarantino's use of the anachronistic pop song, like when that David Bowie song from Cat People pops up in Glorious Bastards, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> but there's one in this movie, I mean, the hip hop song's great, and they, 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 there's a point to them being there. there. I don't want to give it away, but there is a 70s middle of the road radio hit <laughs> that pops up here that's like, so perfect oh, in yeah, a way that I, yeah. I can't yeah. even describe why it works so well, but it just it's a, a great sequence. It is, and Christoph Waltz is adorable in this. He's so cute. He's, he's very he's great. Cool, hilarious. charming great, bounty great, hunter. Great. They have great. Um, the Brunhilde story is yeah. great. I mean, when he explains why he's going along on this quest, it's fantastic. Yeah, no, he's, he's mesmerizing. He's dynamite. Yeah. Leonardo DiCaprio gets a lot of attention for this being a, a very flamboyant, showy role, um, but I I love. I think everybody. he's up to it. I and think he does a great job. And he's never funny in movies, so that was kind of interesting. He's a funny villain. Yeah, I mean, it's kind I mean of he's like terrifying Javier, but funny. Like, yeah. like the Javier Bardem character in Skyfall, in Skyfall. Sure, he's like yeah. kind of gay and kind of menacing. It's all one big mix of interesting stuff. Yeah, and, and it, it, that's and that's a we, we I don't think I mean has DiCaprio ever been in a comedy? Is what's eating Gilbert Grape? I, I guess, but no. he's not funny <laughs> in it. I mean, his character is he was funny. Dramatic. He's great. Yeah, this yeah. Was so a, was uh, a yeah, the good big, couple months for big time villains. Definitely. Um, so uh, after the movie, you and I talked, and uh, maybe it was you we and did. I at all, but we uh, we did. I don't uh, remember. <laughs> no, and I thought that this was great because you know Hollywood so often in in movies uh, about that touch on slavery or the civil rights movement or you know Nazis, the the hero ends up being someone else, the white person who sort of comes in and lets the oh, black yeah, people yeah. be free. And the, you know, the Mississippi burning quality of right, like, thank God for the FBI, or yeah. there's no civil rights movement at all. Yes, Kevin uh, Klein freed <laughs> South Africa. Right, yeah. Exactly, right, yeah. Um, so, and I thought here, that did not happen. Yeah. It definitely did not. And well, here, here we have a moment where, look, if you're a slave, somebody has to make you free, and Christoph Waltz does that. But the hero in this, ultimately, is Jamie Foxx is Django, and by the end of the movie, it's very clear. I mean, this is a this is a mainstream studio movie that, without giving anything away, is really at the end. It's a it's just about black people. Well, it's worth mentioning that this is not just an homage to you know as you said spaghetti westerns and black exploitation, but actually the black exploitation western, mm -hmm. which right. was its own sort of specific subgenre. All those Fred Williamson mm -hmm. movies in the seventies, you know. Uh, and, and there, was, there was that whole sort of 70s period where we had movies like Mandingo that was sort of like, okay, it's, we're post-civil rights, we've got angry black people, let's make a movie about the Civil War and how fucking awful, you know, the antebellum South was and, and how gross slavery was. And so, you know, all of that stuff you can see kind of getting piled in here. And he does it, you know, intelligently and I think, um, it, it never felt squicky. Like it's actually, you know, well, he, he has a smart viewpoint about and it. And there are a few moments that it's, unflinchingly like, yeah, slavery was bullshit. <laughs> like, I mean, seriously, like there's a few moments that it's like, oh, okay, right. You know, there's there's the line when DiCaprio's like, oh, she's my property, well, I can do whatever I want to her. Yeah, you they know? don't shy uh, away from it. Even right. It's a very glossy, very slick, and very fun movie. They don't shy away from the, like, the atrocity right, of right, it. Right, the, the right. right. in a way that I think a lot of, you know, I think it's been a while since we've seen a movie that has, you know, and it's ironically this kind of movie that, that 
yeah, unflinchingly says, like, this was a terrible thing that people did. Well, let me just, but, to, so, but there is an argument, I guess, out there among some that this, is act, that this movie actually is the same thing again, and I would just argue that strongly, that there is not, to call this movie racist because the white guy is the savior, I think is crazy. There's, and first of all, it's not racist. There's a small racial element to it, but I There's think no it's There's no magic Negro in this movie. Right, no, this no. Is, but to me, it's quite the opposite. It is, it is black and power. And, and for all the times that Tarantino has used the N-word over the course of his career, he finally has a historical <laughs> context totally. to do yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, no, they need each other. I mean, no one's really saving anybody. Right. It's, it's actually, it's a buddy comedy about it slavery. It's a buddy yeah. comedy about <laughs> like, slavery. Like, like right. Skin Game, do you remember yeah. that movie yeah. in the 70s? Just like Tango and Cash. Yeah. There you go. Two numbers. Yeah, all right, uh, oh, I loved it. I gave it an 8.8. I give it a 7.2. 7.9. Uh, eight and a half. It's not quite uh, Inglorious Bastards. No. But it's no, a it damn isn't. good movie. It yes. but it's really good. It's really good. 8.2 overall. I, uh, I couldn't recommend it. I said 100% on Rotten Tomatoes. I was about to say, I couldn't recommend it more highly, but I could. I gave it a 10. Put your money right about that. That's higher. That's right. <laughs>